Stop worrying, Pa. They'll be home in time. Pretty rough weather out there. Wonder if that coffee's too hot. Want some? Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. I'm saying did a great job with that cake, didn't he? Yeah. Happy birthday, Hoss. You know, I can never picture Hoss being a baby. Well, for your information, young man, he was a fine, strapping boy. Look, if you're going to worry about him, I'll go out and look for him. Oh, I'm not worried. I, I, they'll, they'll be here. They'll be here. Why don't you go upstairs and rest? You, you, you must be tired. Yeah, and what are you going to do? I got plenty to keep me busy down here. So you're not just going to sit here and worry, are you? No, 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 no. Go on, go on. All right. I'll be reading in my room. Take your coffee with you. Yes, sir. Happy birthday, son. Your son, Inga, my love. So long ago and so far away. of Timbuktu. What would you do? What would you do? I'd lay some eggs all filled with whiskey and get drunk as a kangaroo. <laughs> what would you do? What would you do? Oh, if I was a tavern keeper from the Sagamon Valley so blue, what would you do? What would you do? Find the pretty girls up on Main Street and kiss the ones dressed in Cali Coo. <laughs> Gunner, you're a horse. That's what he is, boys. He's a horse. A horse? You call me a horse? <laughs> Not a horse, you crazy Swede. A horse. That's Smoky Mountain for a big man with a, a right, pleasant way. Oh, then that's good, huh? Then I be horse. 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 Horse Borgstrom. <laughs> <laughs> another round of drinks, boys. Any time a man gets a new name, that calls for another round of drinks. <laughs> <laughs> well, what it be, stranger? Whiskey or ale? Nothing. Like some information. Information? What kind of information? I was wondering where I could find some work. I'm afraid you've come to the wrong place, friend. This has been a bad year. <laughs> Lots of these local boys looking for work. Do any kind of job. I got a sick boy out there. Now, you might try that sawmill at the edge of town. But uh, I'm afraid you won't have much luck. Well. I'll try there. Thanks. Hey, you! Maybe that'll help you get out of town, huh? <laughs> <laughs> hey! Isn't that enough? What would uh, ten cents make you move faster, huh? <laughs> Gunner, you're a bad judge of men. You're too extravagant. You can tell by just looking at him that he's only worth a nickel. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, 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 no. Today I feel generous. Here's a dime, mister.
just quiet down or I'll throw you out myself. You. Come here. Well, you handled yourself pretty well. I'd have cracked their heads together myself. I could use a man like you around here. Do odd jobs, clean up, <laughs> occasionally throw somebody out. I'll pay you a dollar a day in food. How about it? When do you want me to start? That's up to you. I'll be back. Oh, just a minute. Uh, you can probably use this. I'll be back. How are you feeling now, Adam? My head still hurts, Paul, but I'm getting hungry. Well, that's a good sign. That shows you're getting better. Paul, are we going to eat soon? Yeah, son, yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll go get something to eat. I'll be, I'll be right back. Mrs. Nielsen. I hope your daughter likes the fabric. Good afternoon. Can I help you? Uh, yes, I... Uh, some milk and bread. You have a container for the milk? No. Oh, it's all, it's all right. I'll loan you one. You can return it later. I, uh, I have not seen you before. You must be a stranger in town. Yes, I... Would you happen to know of a room that I could rent? Cheap, where they don't object to children? So, you have children. A five-year-old boy. And your wife, she is with you? Now, my boy and I are alone. Well, uh, there is a Mrs. Miller who has a boarding house across the street. It's uh, not very elegant, but it's clean, and I'm sure she won't object to a little boy of five. Oh. How much will that be? Ten cents should do it. Would you, uh, would you have anything for a fever? Oh, you are not feeling well. Oh, it's not for me. Oh. Adam, I told you to stay in the wagon. Now, come along. So, uh... My goodness, child, your head feels warm. Open your mouth, let me see your throat. Oh, it is not bad, just a little on the pink side. It's a thing of the throat children get. Oh, wait a minute. I have something for that. Ah. What is it? It's salt pork and onions. Don't laugh, it's an old Swedish remedy. I'm sure it will help. When you get to the boarding house, ask Mrs. Miller to heat it. Well, how, how much will this be? Nothing. It's for the boy. Well, I, I don't need charity. I'm not offering you charity. I'm, I'm offering you medicine for your boy, because I happen to like children. Goodbye, Adam. I hope you feel better. Thank you, ma'am. <laughs> Come on, Good afternoon, Inger. How's business? Business is fine, thank you, Mr. McWhorter. Oh, is it? I thought it was a little slow. The town's not doing so well these days. Oh, he's just some drifter. I gave him a job cleaning out the stable. Oh, well, let's hope he does a good job of it, then. <laughs> now, when am I going to get my answer? I gave you your answer, Mr. McWhorter. I'm not ready to get married yet. Oh, come now, Anger. You're not going to keep me waiting forever, are you? Well, I'm sorry if you object to waiting. <laughs> well, 
Well, I don't mind waiting. Uh, something I want. You do believe in getting what you're after, don't you? Well, I always have. At least I have up to now. I'd also be very grateful if you heated this up for him. Oh, the poor little boy. Of course. You can come down for it in just a few moments. Thank you, Mrs. Miller. Well, my goodness. You certainly didn't waste any time finishing that up. I sure wish there'd been some jam with the bread. Yeah, well, it filled up the cavity, and tomorrow we'll have some real food. Huh? Sure, Pa. Pa? Yes, son? Pa, did you have anything to eat? Oh, I'll, I'll have something to eat later. Uh, I'll go down and wait for that medicine. I wouldn't like that medicine much, but that lady who gave it to us, she was nice, wasn't she? Yeah, yeah, she was real nice. Again, Gunnar. You are always emptying it, little brother, but you never help to fill it. Do I have the right? Our father left the store to both of us. And he expected both of us to run it. Not one of us to waste his time and money in McWhorter's tavern. Don't tell me what to do. I'm not made out for a storekeeper. What are you made for, Gunnar? To drink, to play cards, to spend your time with your friends talking of going off to gold mines? I'm old enough not to take orders for my sister. I will do as I want. Please, Gunnar. You are wasting your life doing as you want. We could make a success of the store if you would work in it. I will not work in it. I told you I was cut out for other things. If you would only marry McWhorter, I could sell this stupid store. The ground is rich with gold in Canada. I've been hearing such tales it makes my very skin crawl and my hands itch for the feel of it. But you need money for gear, for grub. Boys and I sold everything that we have to McWhorter. We got all the money we need. Me, I don't have any money. But you have a store. Sell it, man, sell it. McWhorter will buy it. It belongs half to my sister. But it's all in your name, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's all in my name. Then that makes it yours. Canada's no place for the soft-hearted, Gunner. You boys talking about Canada again, as usual? Not just talking about it, McWhorter. We'll all soon be on our way. All but you, eh, Gunner? What about my offer? That'll get you there and beyond. You know why I can't sell you to store? Why not? Aren't you man enough to handle your sister? I'm man enough, I'll see it, and you knew it! It's the Inger. She's as stubborn as my father was. <laughs> All she needs is a husband. Wouldn't you like to tame her, McWhorter? He asked me if he could play it. I said it was all right. What are you doing here? Well, I'm giving your son his medicine. I knew you'd be busy. I can take care of my son. Oh, well, I'm sure you can, but not while you're working all day. Miss Borstrom, I had to accept your medicine. That doesn't mean I can't run my own affairs. But, Mr. Cartwright, why are you so against anyone helping you?
Adam, I don't ever want you to play this again. Do you understand? He, uh, he told me about the music box. Did it belong to his mother? Yes, it did. He's better. His throat is better. His fever seems less. But uh, I think he should continue with the medicine. I, uh, I was going to come by the store as soon as I cleaned up a bit. I, I, I don't mean to be ungrateful. It's just... You know, without that dirty beard, your face looks quite nice. In fact, if you wore a smile on it, sometimes it might be quite an attractive face. You know, I think you could use a good meal yourself, Mr. Cartwright. As soon as Adam is asleep, come to my house for dinner. It's right next to the store. She's a real nice... I know, son. She's a real nice lady. <laughs> well, young fella, let's finish up this medicine. Here we are. The food is not much. Oh, it's been very good. The winter has been hard all through Illinois. Not as hard as those farmers when it comes to paying their bills. They will pay their bills, Gunnar. They are honest people. Honest people who want everything on credit. Please, Gunnar, we have a guest. Oh, this looks wonderful. And I do thank you for your hospitality. Have you uh, been a long time on the road? Yes. Yes, we haven't come too far in the amount of time it's taken. Four years to get from New England to Illinois. Four years, but surely it should not take so long. Well, we weren't on the move all the time. We uh, made quite a few stops. Uh, have to have funds to keep going. Yeah. Man can go nowhere without money. You, uh, you say you came from New England. Uh, what did you do there? I was a seaman most of my life. I wound up a first mate. When I got married, I... Opened up a ship's chandler's shop, you know, outfitting ships. And when my wife died, my boy and I set out to build a new life. Why didn't you go back to sea? There's a life for a man. It's pretty hard to raise a boy when you're off at sea most of the time. I'd always had a dream about the West. It's a new country, it's big. I, I wanted to be part of it, to build, to... Grow things. Yeah, yeah. It was just like my father. He had a dream of a new land, too. Where did he get him? A dirty store on a prairie crossroad. He worked at a sweat poured off him, and all he had when he died was uh, that store. But his dream of a new land, at least he never gave that up. Whether I care about a storekeeper's dream. That is your sin, Gunnar. It is a sin to not care. Don't tell me what's a sin. Don't preach to me all the time. I'm sick of listening to you. I'm sorry, Mr. Cartwright. This was no way to treat a guest. It's been a wonderful evening. I, I, I haven't enjoyed one like this for such a long time. But I... I really should be going. I left Adam with Mrs. Miller. I, I hope... I hope we will be friends. Thank you. Good night, Miss Forster. Good night, Mr. Cartwright. Fox grapes are sweet. Mm. Everything around here is sweet. The air, the water, the company. You, uh, you have a big spot of purple on your chin.
What are you looking at? There's so many places I might have passed through on my way west. I might have missed you. Well, I am a very large peasant woman, Ben. It would be hard to miss me. <laughs> You're a very beautiful peasant woman. Honey, oh, my nose is too long and my hands are rough. You're fishing for compliments. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope I do better with those than with the catfish. Oh, you leave those to Adam. He's a pretty good fisherman. He's a fine boy, Ben. Yes. It was nice of you to ask us to share a picnic with you. Well, it's Sunday, isn't it? A man deserves a rest after a long week's work. We have a river in Sweden like the Sangamon. Cold from the snows on the mountains. When we were children, my brother Gunnar and I used to run along the banks picking strawberries, eating them until we were sick. <laughs> you have a head full of happy memories, haven't you? And you? Some good, some bad. You, uh... You loved your wife very much, didn't you? Yes, I... I loved her very much. Inger! Inger! Todd. Here you are. I've been looking all around for you. Why? Is there anything wrong? Get back to town right away. But it is Sunday. The store is closed. Mr. McVorter came around in his new carriage asking for you. I did not tell Mr. McWhorter I would go riding with him. No. But you uh, go off on a picnic with a penniless drifter. Gunnar! Gunnar, wait a minute. You stay out of this. I'm trying to tell you there's nothing to be angry about. I tell you something. You stay away from my sister. Gunnar, you are my brother, not my father. You be quiet. I do what is best for you. You do not run my life. You get back to town. Oh, Ben, I'm sorry. He's, he's young and unhappy. And very angry with me. Hello, Gunnar. Did you tell your sister I was looking for her yesterday? Yeah, I tell her. Well, come on, man, tell me what you say. My sister is a stubborn woman, Mr. McWhorter. You're the man in the house, aren't you? Since your father's gone, it's your job to see that things go right by your sister. Yeah, and I want them to go right for her. It's our father's wish that I watch out for her. Watch out for her? How, by seeing her waste away in that store across the street? Mr. McWhorter, if I sell you the store and Inger still doesn't marry you, what happens to her then? Would <laughs> not marry me? Well, I've got everything in the world to give her. The richest man in the county. I can help you, too. Me? <laughs> I don't need help. Oh, it takes money to go to the gold fields, Gunner. Lots of it. Now, I could help a brother-in-law. Give him all the money he needs. So you tell her, Gunner. Tell her how good I'd be for the both of you. Then you'd be better off without that stranger around. Stranger? That man you have working for you. My sister went on a picnic with him yesterday. With Cartwright? She's seeing him. And I think she likes him. Cartwright, I want to talk to you. Yes, Mr. McCorder. It's about Inger Borgstrom. Yes? I'm going to marry her. I didn't know. She didn't tell me anything about that. I don't want some shiftless drifter hanging around her. When Miss Borgstrom tells well, me that... I'm telling you. And here's something else I'm telling you. There's no place in this town for you. Does that mean I'm fired? That's exactly what it means. <laughs> Mr. 
Here, Drifter. Maybe you're not too proud to take that now, huh? Tell me you're going to marry McWhorter? Marry McWhorter? Who told you that ridiculous story? McWhorter did, just before he fired me. And you believed him? Why shouldn't I? Is, is that why you're moving again? Did you hear me, Ben? There's nothing for me in this town. There's no future here. So what will you do? Go glowering through the world the rest of your life? What becomes of Adam? He'll be all right. I'll take care of him. Can you? Ben, listen to me. How much longer can you go on drifting this way, running away from your memory of Elizabeth? She has nothing to do with it. She dwells over your head like a cloud. She's, she's in your voice, in, you, in your heart. Well, she's dead, Ben. You can't carry her with you for the rest of your life. It's my life. It's my business. I, I have a better answer than that. A, a simple solution. You, you could come to work for me in the store. If your stubborn pride would let you. I don't need your help. I don't need any woman's help. I'm man enough to stand on my own two feet. I'll tell you what I think, Ben Carter. I, I think you, le you left your manhood behind with your dead wife. <laughs> as you suggest. I, I'll work in the store. Oh, Ben, that's wonderful. Inger, I, I'm not a rich man. I have a young son. But I do have a, a dream, a big dream. When I could ask you to share it with me. Yeah. Ask me, Ben, ask me. Inga? Yes, Ben, I will marry you. Oh, ben, uh, what will people say? What will they think? <laughs> well, people will say that Miss Inga Borgstrom is going to marry Mr. Benjamin Cartwright. <laughs> Ben, so I'm going home to fix supper. Would you uh, pick Adam up at Mrs. Miller's? Yes, I will. I'll bring him along with me. Hurry, I'm an impatient woman. <laughs> oh, Ben, um, would you mind very much seeing if Gunnar would come to supper? He has not eaten with us for days. Inga, do you think Gunnar resents Adam and me eating with you all the time? I think he resents me working here. And I know he resents me loving you. Don't be angry with him, Ben. He is my brother, and I do love him, even though he is young and sulks. 
All right, I'll try to bring him along. Oh, but don't have an argument with him if he does not want to come. Why, well, I'll be as gentle as a lamb. <laughs> You could use a good meal. Why don't you come along home with me? I'm not going home. Stay away from me, drifter. Well, your sister's kind of worried about you. She'd like you especially to come home tonight. I told you I'm not going home. I'm going to the gold fields. Well, of course you're going to the gold fields, gonna. But you're not going tonight. He's telling the truth, Cartwright. And I have the money, too. We just made a business deal. That's right. A business deal. I sold him the store. You what? You had no right. Me had every right. His father left the deed in his name. I kept it in my safe. Now I own the shop. You did this to your sister. How could you? You get half the money. For years, your sister supports you, and you do this. Don't preach to me. Leave me alone. You give him back that money and get back the deed. Maybe without the store, he won't be so anxious to marry your sister, eh, Gunner? <sighs> McGordy, you're right. You don't want my sister. You just want the store. Oh, Gunner! <laughs> Gunner! <laughs> the boys had too much to drink. I'd better take him home. Not in that condition. You go ahead. I'll take care of him. Yeah, maybe you're right. <laughs> you don't seem to understand. I said Gunnar sold the store. Well, how can you find that funny? Oh, Ben, don't you see in the way it is? Ever since we decided to get married, I have been trying to get up the courage to do as Gunnar wanted and sell the store. Ben, now we can go west. We can find that dream of yours. We can build what you always wanted. But, but you mustn't do this for me. How could I build anything on your sacrifice? Sacrifice? To have found a purpose, a place in life with you. you you're so... <laughs> Inga, I, I, I know how you feel about Gunnar, though. Ben, I love you. You are my life now. It is time for Gunnar to make his own way. Oh, don't you see, my love? This is the way it should be. Oh, doctor, come in. What is it? I have your brother here, Miss Borgstrom. I'm afraid he's badly hurt. Bring him in the bedroom quickly. You should know, Cartwright. right? When will you be back, Doctor? When I finish my rounds. And uh, what can I do meanwhile? Well, not very much, I'm afraid. Just uh, keep him quiet. You know, with a fractured skull, we can't tell when he'll regain consciousness. But I'll be back. Ben. 
man, how could you? I don't understand. You fought with him, didn't you? The doctor says you almost killed him. I hit him, yes. You hit him. Ben, I thought the anger was gone. I thought when you said you loved me, the anger would go. I didn't hit him in anger. I, I didn't hit him that hard. And now he is lying in that room and he may be dying. Inga, please. Ben, don't. Please go. There's something terribly wrong here. You must believe me. Adam, you lie down for a little while. And stay here with Miss Inger. Pa, uh, what happened to Uncle Gunnar? I don't know, son. But I'm going to find out. Good evening, Miss Borgstrom. Oh, yes, Constable. Mr. McWhorter told me what happened to your brother. It's a terrible thing. How is Gunnar? We, uh, we don't know yet. I'm sorry to be bothering you, but I thought the sooner you preferred charges, the sooner I could arrest that man. Um, Cartwright is his name, isn't it? Yes, that is his name. But there will be no charges. No charges? If your brother dies, this man Cartwright is a murderer. And if Gunnar recovers, he should be punished anyway. I say there will be no charges. Ma'am, you're making a mistake. This Cartwright fellow should be in jail. Good night, Constable. Good night, ma'am. Miss Singer? Yes, Adam? should be in jail. Is my pa bad? Poor darling. No, he is not bad. He may get angry and do a bad thing. But no, Adam, he is not bad. Gunner after I left. Well, I sent for the doctor and I took him home. Now, Gunner wasn't hurt, not as he is now, when I left him here. You listen to me, Cartwright. If you had any sense, you'd get out of town before they pick you up. I'll get out of town after I find out the truth. Well, what do you want me to do about it? I want you to tell you what happened. Get your hands off me. McWhorter, I want you to tell Inga what happened. No need for any fighting. All I want is the truth. And I want you to tell me. something I just can't explain. Go to sleep now. Hmm? 
Now, what happened to Gunnar? I'll tell you nothing. I think he's going to be all right. Let's see him. I've got to talk to him. But the doctor said. Gunnar. Gunnar. I thought he could tell me the truth. The truth? But you said you hit him. Yes. Yes, I hit him. In a moment of anger, I lashed out at him, and I'm sorry for it. But you believe that I could do something like this to him? What else can I believe? I thought once you could believe in me and my love for you. You hit a man, and love is lost. Nothing to be done, nothing. Oh, Ben, I want to believe you. Help me, Ben. Not if you'll always have doubts about me. Either you love me with all your heart, or there's no love at all. Oh, what shall I do? What shall I do? <laughs> Here, Ben did not do this to me. Gunnar, what happened after I left? I remember falling to the floor. After you left, I started to get up, and something hit me on the head. That's the last I remember. McWhorter. It must have been McWhorter. He was the only one there. Yeah. But he'll never admit it. Ben, does he have to admit it? If he doesn't, how will you ever know the truth? He, you just told me, Ben. You said if one loves, one must love with all one's heart. I do, Ben. I do love you with all my heart. Oh. Gunnar, Ben and I would like to be married soon. Do we have your blessing? I keep the pride of her, yeah? You take care of my sister. I'll take care of my wife. And that will take care of your sister. I hope you find what you're looking for. Maybe. Maybe not. But at least I would have tried. As you, Inge. Take with you my love and grateful heart. Goodbye, Gunnar. You will be always in my thoughts and prayers. I hope you find your land, Ben, and raise fine sons. My friends once called me horse, which means a good man with friendly ways. You are that too, Ben. When you and Inger have a son, I, I hope his friends call him horse too. Goodbye, Adam. You take good care of them, huh? Goodbye, Uncle Gunnar. Hey, Paul! Wake up, 
just in time. Oh, what, what happened to you? Oh, old horse turned to flip with me, ain't nothing. Oh, you're not hurt bad enough. No, I just doled up a little bit, eh, sir? Oh, good. Hey. <laughs> Where's Adam? He's out there in the barn putting up the horses. Doggone, Paul. Looks good, don't it? Sure is pretty. Hey, you're not gonna cut that cake without me, are you? Hey, happy birthday, brother. What happened to your arm? No, I just stove it up a little bit, hurrying home for this cake. Well, there's nothing wrong with the other hand. Go on and cut the cake. We've been waiting all night. Well, Wouldn't I light the candles? I guess you did have a long night, huh, Paul? I had plenty to think about. So did I. Had a whole lot to think about, didn't I? How good that cake was gonna be when I got here. But it was worth waiting for. Yeah. It was worth waiting for. I'll make a wish. Yeah. <laughs> 